What's up, you guys? It's your boy Jake, your favorite investor, and apparently your greasiest, most shiniest investor. And today, I'm gonna bust it, bust it out pretty quickly. Uh, give it to you direct. I'm just gonna go over the numbers of the flip that I just closed. If you remember, yesterday we were talking about it, uh, and it's the property that um, I almost messed up. I had to clean up my own mess, right? It's one where you know I was being a little emotional, start being kind of a dick to the to the buyer. Uh, and almost lost the property. But we got it done, we got it closed, and I'm gonna break the numbers down. Now, I'm gonna do it quickly, because those of you who are watching live, right, you guys get to interact with me usually, but I'm gonna save this live, and I'm gonna post it on my page. So those of you watching in the future, what up? Those of you that are watching right now, what up? Either way, let's do this. Now, before I break this down, and I'm not going with the whiteboard, I'm doing it right here at the conference room table here today, um, it's important that you guys know, if you haven't seen any of my stuff before, uh, I do not use my own money for any of these flips. I typically don't go on site for these flips, uh, meaning I never step foot inside for the most part. Um, I'm not a contractor. Uh, I don't have any construction experience. Uh, I'm not a real estate agent. I don't have a license, uh, but I do all this stuff from my office over here. And apparently while getting all greasy with my five head, which used to be a four head, I don't know what's going on there, just turned turn 36. So maybe that's what's going on. But uh, I'm gonna break this down, show you the basic numbers of real estate investing and apply them to an actual flip where you see the before and after as you've seen the visual, the aesthetics, if you will. Uh, but real estate investing isn't really the aesthetics. Obviously that stuff looks good, but what matters is the numbers. And on this one, my friends, the numbers was a good, okay? So we're gonna break this down. I'm gonna draw this stuff right here with the trusted Sharpie, okay? Let me see if I can do this here while you're waiting. Boop, boop. All right, so on this paper here, we're gonna have two different sides, okay? On this side, we're gonna have the project side. And I don't mean to flip you off, guys. Uh, maybe I do, maybe I don't. You're gonna have to wonder. On this side is gonna be the project costs, and this side is going to be the resale costs. And you'll get a good idea of why I break them out into two different sides of things. And you know what, give me one second. I know that those of you who are watching me in the future, um, I know you guys are watching me uh, just kind of finagle and fidget with my stuff here but I'm gonna turn this light on because maybe it'll help. Probably shouldn't have kept that one. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so, and eh, it still doesn't work that well. So, this property I purchased for $170,000, okay? I put, I ended up at the end of the day putting $45,000 into it. And yes, I do know that these numbers are backwards no, there ain't nothing I could do about that, okay? 170, 45, okay? Purchase price, rehab costs. Now, I also sold the property yesterday, late in the day yesterday, got paid on that bad boy today. I sold it for 315,000, okay? So I bought the property for 170, put 45 into it, and sold it for 315 yesterday i got paid on this bad boy today now most people right and i don't really break this down a lot in my content because it can get kind of complicated but most people think that these are the only numbers hey you put 170 into it put 45 into it that's 215 you sold it for 315 that's 100 grand profit not the case there are different numbers that go into it especially when you're running your your uh show right running your program running your business the way that i do where it's all about um spending less time on it delegating to the pros uh, while still getting paid while doing it extremely part-time, okay? So I'm gonna fill this in, right? There's a few more numbers we have to fill in so you get a real idea of what this stuff looks like. Again, we're going fast, you guys. I'm not answering questions today because I'm gonna use this as content posted on the page uh, in a little bit after, we, after we're done, okay? And again, this is the property we just sold. Just sold it yesterday. These are real life numbers. So we purchased for 170. We put 45 into it. There's also closing costs when I purchased the home. Typically, it's between 1% and 2% of the transaction amount or the purchase price. I think it was about 3000 bucks. It was a little bit less, but I'm going to round up about three grand in closing costs, okay? 3000 bucks. In addition to that, there's what's called holding costs. That includes uh, vacant property insurance. That includes uh, uh, utilities, right? It includes HOA fees if you're in an HOA, which this wasn't. Um, for this one, uh, for I think I held it for six and a half months. Um, six and a half months of insurance, six and a half months of vacant property, you know, power, sewer, water, all that kind of stuff. That ended up being on this one about three grand, okay? 
So these four numbers, okay, purchase price, rehab costs, closing costs, and holding costs, this is what all goes into this property to flip it and make it worth what we sold it for, okay? So if we add all those bad boys up, right, and I don't have my trusty calculator, but we got 215, 221, okay? If I'm wrong, those of you in the future, I'm sure you'll call me out in the comments. If I'm right, you'll give me all the praise in the world for doing basic math correctly, okay? This is what we call the total project cost, okay? If I'm using my own cash, which I didn't, but if I was using my own cash, I would have to put 221 grand into the flip in order to resell it for 315, okay? So let me do a little arrow so you guys see the association here, okay? Now also, as I said, you guys, I am not a licensed agent. Uh, I have no desire to be. I enjoy my weekends. I don't have the desire to do open houses and stuff like that. Um, and so I hire an agent to go out there, list the property. They go get the professional pictures and text them to me or email them to me or whatever. Uh, they're also out there um, you know, uh, doing open houses, which right now a lot of places don't allow open houses, but they're there negotiating the contract, making sure we're protected, making sure doing the marketing, doing the hustling, the busy work that quite frankly, they do much better than I would do right now. I don't have a ton of experience with that. I don't care to, to go out there and do that kind of stuff, like I said. With that being said, the seller in a transaction is typically the one that pays commissions, not only to your agent, the listing agent, but also to the new buyer's agent. Typically, it's anywhere between four and 6% total. The two agents split that down the middle. With mine, I paid uh, 5%, so 2.5% to one agent, 2.5% to the other. 5% of 315, Make me do math here. We're gonna say that's about 16 grand. I think it's like 15, 570. I'm gonna round up, okay? So, so once that deal closes, we don't, we do not pay them up front. We pay them after the transaction closes, okay? So 16 grand, once the, uh, once the new buyer's lender or the new buyer brings their money to the table, before I get any of it, the agents get their sticky little hands on their commission, uh, two and a half percent to one agent, two and a half percent to the other. In addition to that, there are also closing costs on the resale, and it's typically between one and 2% of the transaction cost over here. But the difference is when we purchase and we have closing costs, we have to pay that money up front. When we're selling and we have closing costs, the money comes out of the, of the, uh, the new buyer's money that they wire in, okay? That, that also the title company, right? They get their sticky little hands on everything too. So between, um, between one and 2%, this number was almost right on the spot here. I'm gonna say four grand, it was like 39.98, okay? So what happened here is we put 221 into the deal. We sold it for 315. I'll do a little arrow here just so everybody, you know, we can make you extra aware. Sold it for 315. The agents took right about 16 grand and in closing costs, another four grand came out, okay? so. Although we sold it for 315, 20 grand came right off the top, and that leaves me with 295, okay? Let me put another line here, make this arts and crafts time for you guys. So, 221 into the deal, 295 out of the deal, okay? That has a total pure profit is what we call it of what is that? Um $74,000. Okay, 74 grand. Now, I did not use my own money. When I first put this under contract, I put it all on paper and, and marketed, essentially advertised this deal that I had complete control over to a bunch of different lenders. And the lenders that made it easiest for me, gave me the best rates, the highest loan and everything, covered the whole amount. Um, those lenders are the ones that I picked, okay? I do use a combination of two. One covered like 90% of it. The other one, I came in and had them cover my down payment, okay? So two separate lenders it equated to 100% of everything that, that I had to pay, zero money out of my own pocket. Now, with that being said, my friends, they got about 10,000 bucks. It was like 9,500 actually. Uh, so about 10 grand came out of this price point, okay? So 10 grand went to the lenders and that left your boy Jake with 64, it's actually closer to 65 because I rounded a lot of these numbers up. But my profit, or my company's profit, okay, it's not my, it's not my profit. My company owned the house, okay. Um, my company's profit is sixty-four thousand bucks. I happen to be 
100% shareholder, 100, I'm the, the president, vice president, secretary, janitor, and everything in between of my company, okay? So we made, we slash I made 64 grand by flipping this house with zero dollars out of my own pocket by hiring a contractor, hiring real estate agents, and me staying in my nice air conditioned office while they were out there in the 100 degree heat. No offense to them either, because I know that they watch these, they do an excellent job, they make good money off of this stuff. They are all stars, right? They're part of my power team, but we all got paid, and at the end of the day, what was left over was this amount for me. Now, these categories, purchase price, here, let me do this so I don't mark it up. These categories, purchase price, rehab costs, closing costs, holding costs, total project cost, resale, uh, realtor commissions, uh, seller's closing costs, net revenue. These are what go into every single deal. These are the seven different categories right here. And these two numbers are kind of the, the, the net of each of these sides, right? The purchase side and the resale side. This is what goes into every single flip, okay? Uh, the numbers are the numbers are the numbers. The thing is, this pro, this uh, this number right here, the resale number, it's always super predictable and super telling. Gives us as much information we need about our project. It could tell us, a obviously, what we'll sell the property for, because other similar properties in the neighborhood have recently sold for that price point. But b, it'll tell us how quickly our property will sell because there's a trend in that. C, it'll tell us what we need to do to the flooring, to the paint. Uh, to the yard, the landscaping, to the kitchen. Does it have open floor plan? Is it closed? Uh, do we use the, uh, the the laminate hardwood all the way through to the kitchen or do we put tile in the kitchen? What are we doing to the bathrooms? Are we doing carpet? Like what are we doing in each of the rooms? This number right here, how we find this number, it leaves clues for everything that we do, right? And this, my friends, is how the game is played. So I wanted to break this down for you. Uh, it's a little weird for me to be on these lives. Um, for those of you who are watching on live without answering questions and forcing myself not to look at what you guys are saying. Uh, but those of you in the future, this is kind of for you. Uh, and hopefully this helps. This is a fundamental piece of how this game is played. It's a fundamental, like this is the basic level overview of what we do in this business, what I teach in the mentorship group. If you're interested in going deeper into that, hit the link in my bio or hit theflipsecrets.com slash mentor. We'll show you how to break down all of these with scripts, calculators, marketing documents, Every single thing you need, that's what I do. That's what we teach. And on to the next one. I think we got a couple more closing this week, and I'll share those with you as well. So, you guys, you're only one flip away. Link in the bio if you're interested. Let me know if you have questions in the comments below. Talk to you all soon. Take it easy and be good.